Hey, Mike with Nerd Problems Gaming here, the channel where we go through the good and bad of everything nerdy to make sure you spend your time on the best of the best. In today's video, we'll be doing a review and how to play video of Jurassic Parts, the board game. So let's get into it. So Jurassic Parts is an area control game where various paleontologists are competing over fossils and you try and end the game with the most fossils and the highest score. But let's dive into how you play the game first and then I'll jump into my review after that. All right, so now that we've got the game out, let's walk you through how to play. So Jurassic Parts is a game of area control for two to five players where you take on the role of different paleontologists that are fighting over the same slab of rock with the goal of trying to complete the most dinosaur skeletons and collect the most fossils. And you'll do this by chiseling away different parts of the slab and then collecting fossils based on the number of chisels that you had throughout the slab. So these are the different components. You have the player cards, you have the score card, you have different cards that you can use for equipment, the chisels, amber pieces, the mosquito first player token, and then again, the various fossils that make up the slab. So first let's jump into how you actually set up the game. So the first step is to set aside one of the three pile of bones fossil tiles, and these are basically wild cards, and then you're gonna shuffle together the remaining fossil tiles. The next step is to take the remaining fossil tiles and break them into pretty much even piles. And then what you'll do is you'll take one of the piles and flip it upside down. Again, you can go through and shuffle these tiles as well, just to make sure each pile is well mixed. The next step is you take the pile of bones wild card and you'll place it down in the middle. And then you're going to form the rest of the slab around this. At this point, players can just take turns placing different pieces around the slab. They don't need to be in any particular order, but also try and keep the bones as the center of the overall slab. Okay, once you've got the board set up and all the tiles out, you'll be able to move on to the rest of the setup of the game. Again, this will be different every time, which is great, but just try and set it up so it's overall somewhat centered around that middle wild piece. The next step is players will choose a paleontologist of their choice. They all actually function the exact same, so it doesn't really matter which one you choose. Just pick the character and artwork that you like. And then at this point, once you have your paleontologist picked, we'll take these two this time, you go through and take out 12 chisels of the color that you want to be, and you'll lay them next to your player card. You also want to put the field leader card within reach of players where they can see this, as this is something they can activate during their turn if they choose. You'll also wanna put out the 20 amber tokens next to the field leader as well, where all players can access them. The starting player is the person that most recently saw a dinosaur fossil, or again, you can randomly choose it, and then you'll just simply give them the first player token, the mosquito trapped in amber, Jurassic Park style. Once you've determined who the first player is, the second player will start with one extra sharpened chisel, which you can just simply place on the left side of your player mat. The third player receives an amber, and the fourth and fifth players, if you're playing with that many players, receive both an extra sharpened chisel and an amber. At this point, you're ready to play. So the turn order is pretty simple. You'll start off by sharpening three chisels, which means you'll just take three chisels from your dull chisel section, the right side of the card, and move them to the left onto the sharp chisel side. So again, first player, just take the three chisels, put them over here. At this point, you can play chisels. You can transact with the field leader, and you can do this in any order. You can also save up to one sharpened chisel. So if you didn't want to use all of them, you could save one to the next turn, but you can't save more than one. So when it comes to the field leader, there's different things that you can do with them. If you want to spend amber that you have, you can make it so the next two chisels you use ignore rocks. We'll explain that more in a bit. You could also sharpen two additional chisels. So you could bring two from your dull side to your sharp side. You could take any one fossil from the field. So any fossil that's face up that you could see, you could take. One thing to note though, is you can't form a break. And this basically means that if you were to remove one of the fossils, and it totally cut off a section of the slab, that wouldn't be allowed. You can also take any fossil from the field leader. So as you break off pieces of the slab, sometimes they'll end up with the field leader, and so that can give you the opportunity to buy a specific fossil if you need it to complete a set. 
So when it comes to playing chisels, this is pretty simple. If you've got a sharp one, you can just simply set it on any spot within the playing field. Now, one thing to note is that if there's a rock present, this would require two chisels to break through. Some areas also have two rocks, like this spot right here, so that would actually require three chisels of use to get through. So you'd still only lay one on the spot and then you discard the other two back to your dull chisel side. So play will continue back and forth between players laying and placing chisels along the board. And eventually what's gonna happen is that one section will be totally cut off on the slab. And so when this happens, you'll remove the fossils present in the small section and then you'll divvy up the different fossils among players that were a part of the line that broke off the slab. So what you do is you can simply pull these away from the slab and then you'll flip up any face down tiles so all players can see what's involved. And again, each player that contributed at least one chisel will get to take part in the spoils of this. You'll then go through and rank players based on the number of chisels they had as a part of this break. So in this case, white had four chisels and red had five. If for some reason at this time players are tied, you start with the player whose turn it is and then go clockwise around the table and the person that's closer to the person playing that turn will have a higher rank if there's a tie. At this point, what you'll do is in rank order, each player takes half of the tiles rounded up. So in this case, there's five tiles. So five divided by two is 2.5. So you round up to three. So the first player, red in this case, would take three. Second place would then take half of the remaining tiles. So in this case, there's two. So they get to take one, again, of their choice. They'll take one. And then any leftover tiles will go to the field leader, which again, like I said, you can buy using amber on future turns. One thing to also note is that the most tiles you can take from a split is six. So even if half of the total amount of tiles for the first player is more than six, you can still only take six. If the split is even and there's the same amount of tiles on both sides, the active player decides which of the two halves they want to take and split among players. You could also split an area that's like a section inside of the slab. And again, the inside part, whatever's smaller, would be considered the part that you break out. So you just take that out and remove it. Now there is an optional element to the game of resource cards. You don't have to use these but they are something you can add in to add a little more excitement to the game if you want. So if you want to do this aspect of the game, during setup, you're gonna shuffle these and deal one or two cards to each player. You'll then keep them hidden throughout the game until they're used and any leftover cards, you can just return to the box. And again, these are pretty self-explanatory. You just read what's on the cards and they tell you what to do. So again, you can use these, but you don't need to. So feel free to add them in if you wanna switch up the game a little bit. Another thing to note is that you can complete dinosaurs during your turn. And if you do, you're awarded Amber from the field leader for doing so. So anytime there's a split, players have the ability to do this. And so for example, if they add two pieces of the Velociraptor and could complete that dinosaur, they can choose to do so after the split. And when they do that, they'll get one piece of Amber. Again, Triceratops, T-Rex, Pterodactyl, and the Brachiosaurus are all options that you can complete during your turn. And again, doing so will award you one amber that you can then use with the field leader to buy new supplies, abilities, etc. And then each amber is also worth one point at the end of the game if you haven't spent them. And so again, when it comes to the end of the game, players will just total up what they have. If they've completed dinosaurs before the end of the game, they'll be worth the number of points listed next to them. Also, when it comes to plants, the number of points you get is actually based on how many plants you have. So if you have a number of different plant fossils, as the number goes up, it's worth more points at the end of the game, as you can see. Piles of bones can be added into any type of dinosaur fossil and swapped out for them to complete a dinosaur fossil. Then players with the most points will be the winner of the game. If there is a tie, the tie goes to the player that completed the most five tile dinosaurs. And if it's still tied, you'll just keep going down for the number of dinosaurs. So then it would be the player with the most four P 
piece dinosaurs, and then three, and so on. For some reason, this goes all the way down to the pterodactyls, then it's just a tie. And I guess you gotta deal with it. But beyond that, that's the basic rules of how you play Jurassic Parts. So now that you have a better understanding on how the game works, let's jump into my review. Well, again, guys, now that you know how to play the game, how do I actually feel about it? Well, I think Jurassic Parts is a really fun game that's simple to learn and has a really high replay value. And I really like the artwork and theme of the game as well. You really feel like you're uncovering fossils as you're digging and breaking up the slab. And then since it's an area control game, I really think that you feel that competition as well, where everyone's trying to fight over the same piece of land and get the best fossils. Like I said, I think the game has a really high replay value just because every time you set up the game, the slab that you create is totally different. And then I really also feel like your strategy as you play really evolves and can change on a dime as you uncover and dig up new fossils. On top of that, when you're playing with either two players or multiple players, you never really know when that slab is going to break apart. You might set someone up to break up the slab in a piece, but then they go in a totally different direction because maybe their goals are a little bit different and they're trying to collect other fossils you might not have realized. And so I think that makes it a lot of fun. Like I said, you can really feel that competitive nature as you go through and play the game. It's great for groups of players and also a two player game. So that's definitely fun. I don't know of many area control games that play well, even if you're just playing two players. I also feel like a lot of the games actually came down to the wire where sometimes we thought people were ready to win or were really far ahead. But then when we tallied the points after that final turn, it actually became really close, and sometimes there was even some close upsets as well. Like I said too, the artwork is really fun and I think it fits well within the game. I really like the components of the game as well. I thought the chisel aspects were really cool and the amber that you get, especially the mosquito encased in amber, really a throwback to Jurassic Park, so I like that as well. I also just like the amber concept in general where it can be worth points, you can use it to buy things from the field leader, and then with that as well, there's a lot of different varieties. So if you wanna go after a specific fossil, you can. If you want to buy ones that maybe other people abandoned or that you weren't able to capture when the slab split or even using it to get more sharpened chisels on your turn again adds a really big variety to the replay value and the strategy as you play with the game and again i've said it a bunch but i really think the replay value is really high in this game especially when you factor in the element of using the cards of various equipment in the game as well i think you'll be able to get a ton of play sessions in and not really get sick of it and still have a high replay value before you even introduce the cards and then when you do add those in it's just a whole other element to the game that can give you more focused goals as you play to get specific fossil types and extra bonuses when you complete those goals or use those cards in the game. I also think the game stays pretty balanced no matter what amount of players you're playing with, so that's really cool. And after playing the game a bunch, I really think adding Jurassic Parts to your nerd library makes a lot of sense. But let me know in the comments below if you've played this game before, are there are other fun area control games I should check out. Let me know in the comments below. If you want to pick up a copy of this game, there'll be links in the description below where you can do so. And if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button as it really helps out the channel. And if you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications to get the latest updates some new nerd videos we put out. And if you'd like to help us pick out content, support the channel and more, become a patron of ours at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Patreon, and if you'd like to plug into our live streams and Let's Plays you do on the channel, you can follow us on Twitch at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Twitch. But once again, thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you more soon.